Hi YouTube and welcome to part two of the uh, chuck key build and uh, if you want to see me make a mistake and get it all wrong you need to watch this video. One thing to always do with your uh, materials a bit of material control even in the home workshop um, is make sure that uh, you mark the end. Uh, if you can see that there there we go I've just stamped the end with 16 so that's the numbering convention I use in, the, in my workshop. So when I look at the end of a piece of steel, I know what it is. And obviously, when I use the material, I don't cut the end off. Okay, so what I've got now is the parted off bar back in the chuck. And we're now going to face the rear end off. A bit more speed. Quickly chamfer that back edge, so uh, all about there. Run the machine in reverse and just knock the speed down a touch for the chamfering. There we go. See if I can get a little bit cleaner finish with a bit of oil on it, a bit of lubrication. Not quite, there we go. Right, while that's in the machine, I'm also uh, going to um, drill that, I think, uh, ready for tapping uh, when I put the screw in to hold the uh, Tommy bar in place. So we go back to our uh, centre drill, then a number three, same one we used at the beginning. Start the machine up in the right direction. Lock the tail stock in place and then drill. There we go. I'm going to put a five millimeter drill in there. In fact, actually, I'm going to do a 5.1. Uh, just gives me a little bit of clearance. So when I put an M6 tap in there, it won't be tight because the steel is a bit harder than mild. Didn't have to do the hole now. We could have done it later, but being as I was in the machine, I'm in the place. I might as well do it now. It doesn't really matter. Just need to make sure it's deep enough. I'll tap it later. So in terms of where we are, we we'll set the depth stop up and I'll push it in about half an inch. So that's already a quarter. Just a little bit loose now. Half inch, there we go. So that's ready for tapping. Just uh Put a chamfer on it. Hand chamfer's fine. Perfect. Now that's ready for milling. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. Have a closer look now, it's off the machine. 
I haven't gone for the perfect finishes because this is going to be a tool that's going to be dropped and bashed and clanged. I've just gone for a normal sort of clean finish um, uh, just so it doesn't hurt me, etc. And it's nice to handle. So that's the main shank. Uh, what we're going to do now is go over to the milling machine and we're going to set this up uh, in the mill and we're going to put the hexagon on the end. Once we've done the hexagon, we'll turn it round and we'll drill the hole through the end for the uh, Tommy bar and then we'll machine the Tommy bar to the length and then fit that. Okay, so how long do I need the Tommy bar? Well, the original length suits the other chuck, uh, but in this case, I feel that uh, just a little bit more leverage might be required. So I'm just gonna add an extra inch to the length of that Tommy bar. So again, nice and crudely, mark it off. So I'm gonna hacksaw that off there face the end of the bar and then that's ready to go in and be the tommy bar okay so tommy bar what i've done with that is uh, off camera i've uh, faced up and chamfered each end and i've also put a little little notch in the middle so that uh, the screw that i'm going to put into the end of the tool will lock that centrally all right so that's done um, this is a 12 mil diameter so what we're actually going to do is, uh, when we're on the mill, we're going to get the uh, the body uh, and the last operation um, before heat treatment anyway, is uh, to machine a 12 millimeter hole in there uh, to fit this in. So next up, we're on to the milling machine. And as you can see, I've got that set up. I've got a cutter in there. Uh, I've got it in a vise. Um, I'm using a, uh, Basically a collet block, six-sided one, so I can rotate that nice and easily and quickly. And then we're going to turn it round and rotationally uh, cut on the six flats we need uh, for the chuck. First job is to uh, bring the cutter up, touch off, and then we'll take a uh, small cut all the way round and then have a measure and see where we are. Okay, so we've uh, put a hexagon on the end and we've got a problem. And that's why I stopped the uh, video. Uh, as you can see, if we look around there, you'll see that they're not even. So, and the reason for it is, is the cheapest um, collet block I'm using, which is basically not centered. So what I'm going to have to do is remachine the collet block to get it centered. 
and then I'm going to have to cut the end off and shorten that and have another go. So not ideal, but this is what you get sometimes when you use cheap uh, tooling. So I've never used that before. So it was the first time I took it out of the packet, that collet block, uh, and it's uh, bit me. So uh, the reason why I'm showing in, in this video is because uh, other people are most likely going to come across the same problem. So always check your tooling uh, and know your tooling before you do, uh, do it on a job that you're going to rely on. Okay, so what I'm going to do here uh, is I've set the uh, collet um, block up and I'm going to take a cut on the corners um, to get all those corners concentric with the shaft, which is uh, effectively almost between centres on the lathe. So this is going to be a lot more accurate. I've, I've checked it. We've got about a millimetre out. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. Right, a few light cuts. So you can see this is the shiny bit where it's touching. If you look all the way around, they're all different sizes. So that tells you... Oh, that one there, but, you know, it's even tapered as well. So that tells you how far out this block is. So we're going to go around and get them nice and wide on each one. And then we've got a nice reference to uh, hold down on in the vise. And that should solve our problem. Okay, so that's been back in the mill now. Uh, and as you can see, our flats are nice and evening. So the repair job on the collet block worked an absolute treat in the lathe. So there's a little trick for you. Uh, if you get a collet block and you wanna um, you know, make sure it's absolutely spot on, you may need to set it up to do some machining. Uh, as it happens, obviously I had to do this one, but on the, the square one I got, I also had to machine that but I had to do that in the miller machine rather than the lathe because that was the flat faces rather than the corners. So uh, yeah, this is a little uh, quick uh, and easy uh, modification to do to these collet blocks to get them to cut uh, nice. Okay, so there we go. That's machined all the way around. And when you get it right like that, you can see it leaves the corners on. It makes a nice little job putting those hexagons on so next operation now is to uh, put a nice chamfer on the front edge uh, and then we're actually going to uh, drill the hole in the back as well right so we got the, uh, the main shaft back in the uh, mill and we're now going to drill the tommy bar hole So first up, centre drill. Now we need to change the drill. And uh, get ready to drill it all the way through. Okay, so now we've got an 11 mil drill. So we're gonna open that out almost to the right size. Okay, that's through with the 11. Let's take that up to 12mm, which is the size of the shaft, 
And then if we just need to open it out a little bit more, I can just polish it. The reason why we double drill it is so that it doesn't drill the, the hole oversized. And there we go. Drilled all the way through. Well, hopefully you found that useful. Um, I managed to get around that little problem with the collet blocks and uh, there's a, some learning points there for you if you guys have got some of those cheap collet blocks. Um, it's all too easy to get uh, lured into the price, but the quality leaves a le lot to be decide, uh, desired. Anyway, uh, as ever, please like, subscribe and share and I'll see you soon in part three.